Chair, and first I'd ask unanimous consent to allow uh, Congresswoman Cheney and Congressman Gianforte to participate in today's hearing. Hearing no objection, so order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The subcommittee meets today to consider H.R. 2532 by Congressman Grijalva. The bill would override the provisions of the Endangered Species Act and apply permanent regulatory restrictions to the management of grizzly bear populations, perpetuating federal control of wildlife management decisions that are traditionally and effectively managed by state authorities, even after a listed species has recovered its population to sustainable levels. Although the Endangered Species Act has been spectacularly unsuccessful at recovering 98% of the species under its provisions, there have been a few happy exceptions, one of which is the grizzly bear population. As we will hear from the director of the Wyoming Department of Game and Fish, the grizzly bear population in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem has recovered from 136 bears in the early 1970s to more than 700 today. This is above the estimated carrying capacity of the conservation area, and it meets or exceeds all of the ESA criteria for delisting. This has been in part due to extraordinary efforts by Wyoming state officials to augment and facilitate federal efforts, enlisting the cooperation of landowners, uh, local communities, and the general public. A major motivation for the state to do so has been the promise that traditional state prerogatives over managing the ecosystem will be restored once the endangered species population is recovered. According to the United States Geological Survey, the range of the Yellowstone grizzly has quadrupled since being listed under the ESA, currently occupying more than 25,000 square miles of habitat. The expanding population now risks overwhelming the resources of the habitat, forcing the growing population into a wider range that brings them increasingly into contact with human populations, sometimes with deadly consequences, both for humans and for the bears themselves. Under the provisions of the ESA, the grizzly bear no longer meets the definition of threatened and should be delisted. Both Democratic and Republican administrations have proposed doing so, but have been repeatedly thwarted by political agitation and litigation. In fact, delisting was first proposed by the Director of Fish and Wildlife, Dan Ash, under the Obama administration. State wildlife managers have proven to be able stewards for the preservation and perpetuation of other bear and wildlife populations within their jurisdictions, which have produced healthy populations at levels that the habitat can support. Now, we're often assured that the Endangered Species Act is entirely science-based. Well, the science tells us that the population is fully recovered with numbers well above those needed to assure genetic diversity, and that the population is now expanding at a steady rate. It is also warning us that the population is exceeding the ability of the land to support it. But this bill ignores this science because of decidedly unscientific ideological aversion to hunting. Yet if a sustainable, healthy species population is desired, tightly regulated hunting is highly preferable to nature's way of dealing with population control, which is disease, starvation, and encroachment into other habitats. Worse, as we'll hear in testimony, this bill imposes provisions that make species relocation all but impossible, foreclosing the opportunity of transferring grizzly bears from overpopulated habitats to underpopulated ones. The Congressional Sportsman's Foundation warns that the credibility of the Endangered Species Act is dependent upon the successful transfer of wildlife management authority to state fish and wildlife agencies upon recovery. This legislation directly undermines state wildlife managers and sound science and breaks the promise that species management will be restored to state wildlife managers, local communities, and private landowners once its criteria for recovery are fulfilled, a promise that is essential to assure continued cooperation while a species is listed. Most of all, this bill places humans in increasing danger of injury and death as grizzly bear populations are pushed into foraging farms, ranges, parks, campgrounds, and ultimately rural towns by the excesses of this legislation. One would hope that the supporters of this bill would gladly seize this very rare success of species recovery under the ESA and declare victory. Instead, they ignore the scientific threshold set by the ESA and add permanent restrictions to grizzly bear management regardless of the size of the population and its effect on both the species and its habitat. This bill recognizes no scientifically supported population limits for the habitats affected, which in effect condemns the grizzly bear and its habitat to morbid overpopulation. This bill substitutes emotional, ideological, and sentimental biases that are the polar opposite of scientific resource management. 
It does, however, inst uh, illustrate two of Ronald Reagan's famous principles. Uh, first, that there is uh, nothing as permanent as a temporary government program, and that the nine most terrifying words in the uh, human language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. I yield back. <laughs>